I ain't gonna lie to you. This is the lens I've been waiting on for so long. The new Sony 16 to 35 millimeter F 2.8 G Master, the gangster mode. Listen, I've been waiting for this probably for what, three years? It's been like four years since the original 16 to 35 came out. This 16 to 35 improves on the previous in just about every single way, in specific, four areas number one resolution at the corners number two chromatic aberration control number three close focus and distance and number four flaring and ghosting it's about 20 percent lighter than the last one and about 10 percent smaller so that's what we're going to talk about in this video is this new sony 16 to 35 f 2.8 gangster mode and yes i will be buying one with my own money let's get it Right, let's give you a tour of the new Sony 16 to 35 2.8 G Master Gangster Mode in the house. Okay, this thing is very, very lightweight. It only weighs 547 grams. If you take a look at it, we got an aperture ring on here, of course, and there's an option to de-click it. We have two customizable buttons on here, just like all of Sony's new G Master offering. We got our G Master designation right there, an autofocus, manual focus switch, and a iris lock right here. If we open up the back, you see that it does have weather sealing on here. There's a nice gasket. Sony says that it is weather sealed all throughout the body. Not waterproof, but weather resistant, y'all. That don't mean go throw this thing in a bucket of water and expect it to survive, okay? If we take a look at it at 16 millimeter, it is extended just a little bit. If we go to 35, it does pull back in. Man, the center of gravity really doesn't change with this lens when you're zooming in and out. On the original 16 to 35, it extended a whole lot more than this. And this one is only like maybe a half inch extension okay if we take the top off we got the same 82 millimeter filter thread with a minimum focus distance of 0.22 meters this is absolutely true y'all will see that in the video overall a very well lightweight constructed premium filling lens just like sony's other g master lenses Woof, i need that all right, it's getting nice and warm out here. So the new 16 to 35 millimeter has a different optical design than the old one. I can tell you off the top of my head that it's got 11 bladed aperture, okay? I can't tell you anything else. So I'm not about to sit here and act like I remember all the terminology about it has four advanced the spherical alien tasing components. Like, I'm not about to do all that. I'm gonna just put it on the screen for you. Here you go. I'm gonna go and jump in the light room from here. Okay, this is the type of magic that Terry's able to do. And then we'll come back and finish talking about it. All right, we are in light room and we're gonna take a look at a few JPEGs real quick, just so you can see what it looks like with the camera corrections turned on. And then Terry's gonna do the unthinkable. I'm gonna turn off all in-camera corrections so that you can see the raw photos right out of the lens. And then we'll talk about that more afterwards. So anyways, here's my youngest daughter. If we punch all the way in, oh, you can see her underbite and all the details and stuff, her face. So freaking cute. This is taken on the Sony A7C Mark II at 35 millimeter f2.8, and you can still see right through the glass. There's plenty of freaking detail. You can see her pores. You can see she needs some water or some chapstick. Come on, Talia. But anyways, beautiful rendering of the image. This is my freaking dog, and let me tell y'all something. This is the most annoying freaking dog I've ever experienced in my entire life. I cannot stand this guy. I take care of him. I don't believe in mistreating animals. You got to deal with him just like you got to deal with an annoying kid. But it is what it is. If we punch in to his eye bam punched right in on him plenty of detail now this is one of the benefits of this new optical formula because there's still even at the corners of the image still plenty of detail and he might have moved his ear so it might be a little bit of motion blur in there but and the wind was blowing but you can still see plenty of sharpness and detail now the next image is at 35 millimeter f 2.8 and i was very very close to this flower and again we're gonna talk about this a little bit more but the magnification of this lens throughout the focal range is actually fire so if we punch in on here bam plenty of detail that is almost 
like I ain't gonna say macro macro but like half macro right look at this you can see all the hairs on the bulb and all that good stuff and the last image I want to show you before we move to the city is this freaking alien I caught on the leaf this is at f6.3 35 millimeter if we punch in look at that it's plenty of detail on there you can see all of the little markings and stuff on his backside and one more the alien definitely an alien plenty of detail throughout the leaves all that good stuff crazy sharp now I want to go downtown real quick these are JPEGs right out the camera and there's still plenty of detail on the car not much flaring not much ghosting not much aberration around the chrome parts and again this was at 16 millimeter f4 so it's doing really really well to be that wide now again this is a JPEG so all the in-camera corrections are turned on here's another photo shot directly up into the air and I specifically wanted to show you all this because on the 16 to 35 original joint when you shot into a situation where the background was brighter than the foreground a lot of times you got loss of contrast well if we take a look at the windows down here there's still plenty of contrast plenty of sharpness and it still looks great even on the edges and the distortion is very very well controlled now again this is a jpeg it's gonna be a little different once we hit the raws but let's keep going this image i did use an in-camera look but as you can see there's not a whole lot of distortion and there's plenty of detail this was shot at f 7.1 at 16 millimeter plenty of detail even far away so the lens is doing great right here i do want to show you the sun stars real quick so if you stop all the way down to f22 first of all you'll see freaking dust all over my screen i need to clean my freaking sensor off but 11 bladed aperture does give you some nice sun stars for this set of images i turned all in camera corrections off why somebody would do this unless you're shooting astrophotography I don't know, but I do like to try to give y'all a good representation before the camera applies any corrections. If this is relevant to you or not, I don't know. But neither here nor there, here we are. So this is at 16 millimeter f2.8. This is raw taken on the Sony a7 IV. And as you see at 16 millimeter f2.8, there is quite a bit of vignette and some barrel distortion. If we go to f4, the vignette does start to clear up at 24 millimeter f2.8. 2.8 again you can still see there is some vignette there if we stop down to f4 it goes away f5.6 it's a whole lot better than it was before 35 millimeter same thing f2.8 there's some vignette not too much distortion by f4 it cleans up f5.6 it is a lot better now for this image let's take a look to see if we can spot some chromatic aberration somewhere so a lot of times you'll spot it on this satellite up here on top of the house or along the gutter so i'm going to punch in right on the gutters and at f2.8 and again all profile corrections are turned off if we punch in even closer i mean you can see some i mean at this point we are at snob level this is 1600 percent but from the surface if we just go back to like 100 percent or a little bit closer very very well controlled when it comes to purple fringe and green fringe and stuff like that if we go to f4 not too much difference now let's go back out to 24 millimeter and again let's punch in on the gutters this is at f 2.8 and again you can't really spot too much chromatic aberration anything like that f4 and then f 2.8 at 35 millimeter again same thing very very well controlled you don't really see any fringe or anything on here all right last set of images before we move on and go back to the park so this is 16 millimeter f 2.8 if we punch in on the light first of all there is quite a bit of vignette and if we punch in on the light uh there's a very very small amount of purple fringe right here it was a super bright day outside if we go to f4 it cleans up if we go to f5.6 the vignette cleans up even more so if we punch in a 35 millimeter punch in on the light there's a little bit of fringing up here a little bit of fringing right here f4 f5.6 now i want to do this real quick let's go back to 16 millimeter and i'm going to turn on profile correction because lightroom already has a built-in profile for this lens so if we enable profile corrections it cleans it right up immediately so you know you know what let's go back to the park and i'll finish talking about it there okay now let's be real ain't nobody about to sit there and turn off the end camera corrections that are the they, they put them there for a reason okay like there's no reason to turn those off unless maybe you're doing astrophotography and you want to do all of those corrections yourself unless you are doing that which i mean i guess there might be some of y'all out there that will do that like i can't find any legitimate reason to turn off in camera corrections any lens in my opinion especially mirrorless lenses because they're trying to make them smaller and lighter of course they have flaws here and there even the best of the best ones have flaws but as long as you leave the in-camera corrections on which i turned them off for that test which you saw 
um, as long as you leave them on before you even get the images to the computer or whatever editing software that you use. As you see, most of the flaws are corrected. And then if you need to, there's already a built-in profile in the Lightroom for the Mark II version of the 16 to 35 to take it even further. Overall though, the new optical formula really, really helps out. It's got great resolution. It's very, very sharp, even in the corners, even wide open. It handles flaring and ghosting and backlit situations really, really well. It handles distortion really, really well. And then my favorite thing out of everything is how close you can focus. Now, it's not macro, but you can get some really, really close up fun photos and video with this lens. So overall, I think the optical design, the image quality, the contrast, all that stuff is way better than the old one. Let's talk about autofocus and focus breathing and all of that other nerdy stuff that y'all like to talk about. By the way, I never, never punch into like 600%. I only do that for y'all. Like, like I don't do that stuff, okay? I, I just do it for the, for the science, okay? Anyways, let's get it. I feel like the way I'm coming in the frame, I need to like play some theme music or something like that. Listen, we need to talk about autofocus real quick and breathing performance real quick. So, autofocus is really freaking simple because it just works. It's the same as Sony's other new lenses. It's got four XD linear motors in two separate groups that can move independently on this floating focusing system. And basically what that nerdy stuff means is the autofocus is crazy fast. It can even keep up with the A92's 30 FPS blackout free with full autofocus in every single frame. It can keep up with 120 frames a second out of all of the new cameras in 4K. And it can keep up with all of the AI stuff. So the human pose estimation and all of that stuff that the new Sony cameras do. The 16 to 35 can keep up. The autofocus is great. It works. It's really, really good. And when it comes to breathing, I hate to disappoint you, but it ain't none. Okay, I'm gonna put a couple clips on the screen for you. I should say if there is any, I can't really see it. At 16 millimeters and at 35 millimeters. And by the way, I have breathing compensation turned off in these clips. I can't spot any breathing, which is really good and on par with the new 70 to 200 millimeter F4 because that's a zoom lens that also didn't suffer from focus breathing. So whatever Sony is doing with this new formula and these new lenses clearly is working because a lot of the flaws that we were complaining about are now fixed. Now, we've talked about breathing, autofocus, design, image quality and photo and video. I done put a whole bunch of samples of both on the screen for you, I think. It might be time to wrap this video up. Let's go. My back. <laughs> so I think it's time to wrap this up, man. I've been using this 16 to 35 for what, like three weeks? And um, I've genuinely enjoyed it and I absolutely have to have one. That's no exaggeration. I will be buying it with my own money on the day we're allowed to order it. Uh, overall, I think they did a great job upgrading this lens. It's smaller, it's lighter. It's got better autofocus, better breather performance, better image quality. Like everything about it is just better. And honestly, it's one of the best wide angle zooms out there, especially in the pro department. So uh, I'm curious to know what y'all think about the new Sony 16 to 35 millimeter F2.8 gates the mode down in the comments. Uh, I'll be down there kicking it with y'all, reading them all, responding to a lot of them, unless it's some trash. So uh, let me know what y'all think. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm out of here. Tyson Terry Warfield. Piece of chicken grease. Much love, y'all. Peace.